Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call me One Take Jesus. Let's get it. Before I went all sicko mode, I was writing an Elden Ring video. I say writing, but it's more drowning than anything else. I'm currently six drafts deep in this thing. This section isn't part of the original script, but while I was coughing and shitting and crying, I was making my way through the Scarlet Rot section in the DLC, and that Scarlet Rot text flash hits different when you're running a 40 degree fever. Elden Ring is a game full to the brim with pestilence. It is in fact about pestilence, and the irony is having this grand cosmic parasite positioning itself as a god simply because the carrots are crazy. You think America had grills? I think America had grills. Imagine you're a horn sent who just watched his whole family get genocided and then America hits you with that trick daddy smile? That would be crazy. The funny voices in my phone keep yelling about feet and poison swamps and yeah I remember Blight Town. I remember those dart throwing assholes. Fuck those guys. Depictions of rot and disease in the past Souls games were pretty harsh and gross. Elden Ring has a much more colorful but equally revolting approach. Here the afflictions you suffer are influences of multiple outer gods, and each of them are their own distinct type of awful. The blood fiends in the Mogun Palace citizenry practice in blood magic under the influence of the formless mother, a masochist being who grants the power of bleed to those who stab her nebulous form in the beyond. I love how fucking freaky the bleed looks in this game. In Dark Souls, bleed just meant exponential damage stacking on specific blades. Here it's this kind of affliction that builds and explodes out of you and the highest form of it is Moog's blood flame. Can you imagine how painful that shit feel dog? It probably burns like crazy. One thing I love about the DLC is how it expands on concepts that were previously established in the base game in ways you wouldn't really expect. The base game had these cute albeit slightly creepy parts and the DLC has an earlier version of that where the parts aren't themselves sentient but rather containers for malformed horn scent, flesh taut in the shape of the part. Distended fleshy limbs crawling forth at you as they scream in agony. It's some real good body horror. It's a close second but what has to be my favorite one, the real top dog, the Lebron of the Petri dish is I remember being really disappointed by how weak Toxic was in Elden Ring compared to the previous Souls games until I hit that threshold and made my way into Liberia that I came across that real shit. Scarlet Rot to me reads like what if HIV was a fungus that was also extremely radioactive. I love how fucking evil Kaelin looks man, it rules that you can just walk into the eclipse. In the DLC, Saint Romina represents the foothold that it has taken in the land of shadow, but it looks a bit brighter there than it does in the base game and while this is a small difference, it's a real interesting one because they evoke two completely different vibes as a result. The Scarlet Rod here reminds me of those poisonous fruit that will make you shit yourself until you die if you eat it, or those really scary fluorescent frogs. But the one in Kaelid is just pure abject rot, a perversion of life. It's this sickly dark red, not something that is a dangerous part of the land, but rather a scar upon it. Three, two, one, zero. It's why I find Melania so interesting as a character. As she fought for her brother against the baddest motherfucker on the littlest horse, she figured out that she was not really built like that. Radon is a real beast, a real creature, so she did the most desperate thing available to her. She dropped a nuke on his ass. Through Millicent, we see that the blossoming of the Aeonian flower is this traumatic event. And that tells us how much pain Melania must have been in both physically and mentally. For warriors as proud as her to suffer like this in front of other people is torture unto itself. I hate being looked at when I'm sick. I hate seeing people pity me. I dreamt for so long. My flesh was dull gold and my blood rotted. One of the coolest details of the Melania story has to be how she got to the Halic Tree after her disastrous fight with Radon. She was out cold and one of her soldiers, a clean rot knight named Findlay, carried her all the way from Caled, the Rulim Grave, Liurnia, Atlas, the mountaintop of the giants, all while fighting off beasts already battle worn and with Melania on her back. Now that's girl power, god damn. Reading through this, I can't help but feel a little sad at the state Melania finds herself in when you meet her. You come to her at her most tired and dejected, having had her brother stolen by Mo Weinstein. And she can't keep up, she's real tired. She's never seen a real nigga busted down with a greatsword this hard before. During our fight, after facing the full might of this giant slab of steel, she gets desperate. Wait. But my greatsword is too cold, my swing too different, my savage lion's claw will kill her. <coughs> Fuck. 
The impression I got in my first playthrough was that Melania is this noble warrior whose pride is too big to conceive of anyone who could possibly beat her, but now I see it. She's scared. Scared that she won't be there to make Mikola's dreams come true. All she wants is to care for the one that eased her pain when no one else would. It's a very tempting instinct to want to hide away when you're sick and die in a hole where you won't inconvenience anyone, but that is an expression of weakness. It still does fill me with great shame to be waited on by other people, even when I physically cannot do anything about it about it. But I also have to acknowledge that it is nice to be loved. Melania was loved by Mikula who weaved for her the means to fight her enemies and the god that would consume her, and by Finley who through battle wounds and hostile environment after hostile environment carried her lord to safety. It's nice to be loved. In this trying time, I've also been thinking about Perfect Vermin. Perfect Vermin is a very simple game. You wasd around a charming office building with a hammer, smashing objects and they collapse into these nice physics -y bits. Most of them shatter with that heavy, satisfying, shattering ceramic sound, and some of them... Well, some of them don't do that. As you make your way through this office, you'll notice some objects are out of place. There's a chair in the middle of a room, or a table blocking the passage, or a second toilet crammed into a stall, and these aren't supposed to be there. There's some kind of unwanted growth infecting this office. After you cleanse them with your big hammer, a newscaster pops up, and in a droning reversed voice, he tells you to do it again, but better this time, faster. He needs you to be more efficient. And as you repeat these levels, his health deteriorates. The odd no smoking signs you'd see occasionally at the beginning of the level become more frequent and sporadic. His ashtray fills to the brim. The geometry has become uncooperative, he tells you, in between staggered breaths holding back blood. He comes apart at the seams, and the levels become more surreal as a result. The opening room is now covered with no smoking signs, and they encircle the door, and this time there are far more cancers than you can even hope to extinguish. The man is a puddle on his desk. <laughs> You smash through windows and doors and tables and fall through them into nothing only to find yourself in a meat hallway. Outgrowths, polyps stick out of a wall. You smash them and the ones that follow them, there's another meat wall behind them. And after you smash that one, there's a lift. The same one you've been coming out of at the start of every level. And when you enter... Mr. Schmitz, please sit down. We need to discuss your test results. That will have to wait. You are dying! It's what we'd feared, the cancer spread, it's now- If it was just in your pancreas alone, it would be inoperable. But it's spread to your liver, your lungs, even your bones. By our estimates, you have four to six months. You need to start putting your affairs in order. You can't walk out of this office and have this all just go away. I hate the smell of hospitals. Maybe it's a consequence of living in a country with a spotty medical ethics record, or maybe it's just the strong death association. That smell still bothers me. So much so that even when I'm sick, I have to be pretty damn sick to end up going to the hospital. I'm a guy who gets sick pretty often and pretty hard. It's never anything serious though. I get a boil every now and then and I've been doing so since I was 9 years old. Every 18 months like clockwork, I'll get a fever so severe I think I'm genuinely going to die. I remember the last one I got before this one. About 14 months back, I was binging pause and like videos and having what I can only describe as hostile geometry fever nightmares. Everything hurts so bad. This time, when that shit hit, I kept thinking about that one Jacob Geller video I watched forever ago and now, it seemed like the perfect time to get into a game about sickness and death. My sickness is not severe like this man's, nor is it in the same strata, but I know that cancer does not look like this. I know what it's like to be covered in boils and to feel deformed and scared and unable to be around anyone out of fear of infecting them. It's horrible, it's isolating. And seeing it here, as this man thinks about his mother with whom he had a complicated relationship, I find myself staring back at myself through the screen, glassy eyed, and then I cough so hard my back feels like it's gonna give out. I see dear Mr. Spitz boils and I think back to the heavy smell of someone nursing a terminal illness at home, that musk of death that hangs in the air around them, or the oppressive sterility of a hospital waiting room where the nurses are too pussy to look you in the eye because your family member is already dead, but they don't want to be the one to tell you that, it would be too much of an inconvenience for them. I fucking hate hospitals. 
That's really depressing. I hate feeling down when I'm sick. Almost makes the sickness worse. You know what always brings me joy though? To quote the great Tim Rogers, an idea like Katamari Damashi would never escape its creator's brain. It just banged against the walls for several years while he sat in on planning meetings. So true, bestie. <laughs> Katamari Damashi might be the purest vibe I've ever caught off a video game ever. It is more than the sum of its parts. It is style so substantial that first contact with it for me felt like a man who has never been less than a thousand kilometers away from me was standing right next to me happily showing me his personal sketchbook. The drawings are so good man. Personable and friendly looking, colorful and funny, he's a really cool dude. Katamari Damashi is a very simple game. You, the prince of the cosmos, bear witness as your father in a drunken stupor destroys the stars in the universe. Now, as payment for your birth and as a means of buying your father's love, you must gather everything on earth, every book, every pen, every post lamp, every boat, every fish, every computer, and roll it into a massive Katamari and have those take place of the old stars. You're given a timer and a Katamari to roll, things stick to it. The more things you can get to stick to it, the bigger it gets, and the bigger it gets, the bigger things you can get to stick to it. The inhabitants of the space is your rolling through don't appreciate it very much. Whenever that timer hit 30 seconds, it rapidly changed the vibe of the game for me. The feeling of impending failure was so stressful that I had to nope out several times. This might be the most I've been stressed out by a video game ever, which is saying a lot. The music is half the experience of a Katamari Damashi level. I can't believe it's on Spotify now. I love the feeling of loading into Poland and hearing you are smart, or landing in Spain and rolling to the melancholy of Lonely Rolling Star, a song about love and death and longing and broken dreams that is made that way purely based on the context that is given by the singer they chose to perform it. Oh hey Vinny. I wanna live here, this is cool. So true bestie. Katamari Damashi is my favorite video game. Everything about it exudes childlike wonder and a love for all things. It is a perfect art moment. The loop, the environment, the way it ends, the experience, the song selection, the way it's curated here is second to none. West Side Gun could never. I love this game so much, man. It bathes my brain in so many good chemicals. It feels like a home. It reminds me that even if it doesn't feel like it, even if you don't feel it now, everything will be okay. Our bodies all fail us sometimes. <coughs> Everything will be okay. Everything will be okay.